This has been a learning process from the beginning. I thought I knew about Israel. I thought I had a very healthy understanding of what to expect when I arrived there. But I didn't. Each location that I choose in the world stage comes about because I wanted to mine where the world is right now and chart the presence of black and brown people throughout the world. And I chose China for a certain reason, Brazil for a certain reason, Nigeria. All of these countries are beginning to become features of this global conversation. One of the interesting features of Israeli society is that there's so many aspects of the diaspora. Back during the 70s, there were several movements that were designed to embrace the full diaspora of Jews, including the Ethiopian Jewish population. Many of them had been mistreated in their home country, and there was also a large level of suspicion around their return to Israel. That, however, has changed and their presence is very firmly rooted now in modern Israel, but it's also something that I think is oftentimes overlooked. I want to say thank you very much for having us here. My pleasure, my brother. It's a really extraordinary day that we spent with Kalkidan and with all of the musicians that surround his group. Yeah, yeah, give it to me, yeah, yeah. Me come from Zion, Rastaman, without locks, fight like lion, with gold, not pot, knock some not trying, this is my style, I just stuck. Just my name is Kalkidan, and I, I was born in Ethiopia. I came to Israel when I was four years old. Your music is about what? It's about culture, it's about uh, who are you, you know, the roots. It's about uh, not forget yourself, where you came from in the fight for your right, you know? It's about equal, equality, to be equal. I think there's a strong correlation between being on the margins of society as a person of color in America and that which we see in the streets of Israel. It's very hard to be in your daily life as a black person here in Israel. When somebody tells you, you're not worth something, if you believe him, this is your mind believing. Mm -hmm. If you ch change your mind, you can, he cannot do anything to you. Addis Ababa to Tel Aviv Came from Africa to the Middle East Cause I believe and got dread on my head But I'm Rasta in my blood And why we need religion for there is one God I said I'm born in the village but I run this town You can see me smiling but I am acting like a clown Ethiopian people rise, we never ever falling down Negative when they me out no gaze Father Zion mama Africa, Africa we loving ya They're Inside me, in the hip hop, I ain't got no fear You know, when I got the hip hop it's like you know I'm fearless <laughs> I, uh, I feel like I got a weapon. Eyes, chin, 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 good. Yeah. Every time I travel throughout the world, I start to realize there's a certain essence to black American culture that has become globalized. And there's a sense in which every country finds their own specific response to something that started very early on in the 1970s in the Bronx. Yeah, 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 yeah. To hear the sounds of Amharic fused with Hebrew, fused with French and English, but also concerning the look and feel of a very black American aesthetic, but telling the story of what it means to come from Ethiopia and to find your homeland in Israel. A very interesting way of dealing with uh, history, but also dealing with how one puts oneself gracefully into the world. I was in one of the nightclubs in Tel Aviv. The type of music culture that was being celebrated there was around hip hop, but it was also around reggae as well. I mean, that you saw young white Israelis with dreadlocks down their backs, fraternizing with Arab Israelis and Ethiopian Jews, all in the same room. This is something that I definitely don't necessarily see when I turn on the television every day and think about what a night in Israel is like, what a, what a night in Tel Aviv is like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today we're in Jerusalem, 
and we're doing a little bit of shopping. We're trying to find decorative patterns. You find that there's definitely moments of Judaica, but there's also a lot of Arab-Israeli patterns and influences. There's Islamic decorative traditions that we're starting to see all over the marketplace. In this body of work, I'll be able to marry this very long and beautiful tradition with these painfully young and present models. Maybe this, this chair here. Yeah, just like a... So this was an opportunity to broaden the conversation, to say yes to the presence of Arab Israelis, for example, to say yes to the presence of Mizrahi and Ashkenazi Jews as well. What you'll find is that in certain paintings, the decorative component reaches forward and demands to be in the present tense just as much as the figure is. And so you've got this friction between beginning, middle, and end, the sandwiching between the model who stands in the painting and the decorative field which wants to move itself forward as well. It functions almost in the same sense in which one has to fashion their own sense of self within time. The head must be proud, proud. What I seek to do in some sense is to take a snapshot of what it feels like to walk through the streets of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And of course, every viewer has a different response to those paintings. So in the same sense in which I'm presenting to you this very fractured sense of what it felt like to be in Israel, you're bringing your own contingent set of values and beliefs and histories that will then engage that painting. So what is the truth that's being told? Well, there is none. It's simply a story of a story of a story that attempts to approximate uh, a lived moment. Bonjour, bébé, fais bouger tes fesses, fais apprécier le maestro. Mich t'as dit mal rancolie, mon 